guys, welcome back to my channel. I am in labor. I was not thinking of recording anything earlier because I was having a really bad contractions, but after the epidural, I feel a lot better. So I thought I would record a little bit of what is going on here. I have all this stuff in my arms. I have my cup of ice. Hector is asleep. Not Hector. Hector is right here, but he's not asleep. My sister is over there, and my other sister's there. <laughs> Sorry for the shitty quality. So, basically, I got here, and I wasn't really wanting to come. I was in denial that I was in labor. But I'm glad I did come because my water ended up breaking while I was here waiting. So, yeah. Like I said, I do have the epidural. They do have a little bit of Pitocin going. Not because my contractions were not fast enough. It's just they were not strong enough. So, they were pretty painful to me. So, if that wasn't strong enough, I must have a low pain tolerance because they felt like tens. Today is October 9th, and I was not expecting my baby girl until 41 weeks pregnant. I'm 39. But yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. to be pushing soon. I'm tired. I didn't get any sleep. My stomach's starting to grow. I'm kind of hungry and I'm nervous but I'm trying not to think about it because if I do I'm gonna cry. I'm not trying to cry. <laughs> There's my mom. Hey guys, so it is 12.35 p.m. I officially had my baby girl. She is right here. She weighed um, 7 pounds, 2 ounces, 19.75 inches long. Today is October 9th, 2019, and she was born at 10.01 a.m. Um, I am pretty much exhausted. I got no sleep. And, yeah, we are in the, not the recovery room. Basically, this is going to be our room for the next couple days. They said that we'll probably, most likely, be released on Friday. So, I kind of just wanted to give you a little recap of what happened during my whole labor and delivery. I am so sore right now. It's not even funny. And yeah, so basically what happened was uh, two nights ago on, I don't even know what day of the week it is. Um, I think it was Monday night. I think today's Wednesday. Yeah, today's Wednesday. So on Monday night, Hector went to work, which is my husband, and he works nights. And when I went to the restroom, my mucus plug came out. <laughs> and I already knew to expect that and not to like rush to the hospital or anything because I know that it happens. So that happened. And then a little bit later, when I used the restroom, like throughout the night, I was having like a pink-ish discharge. Like it looked like it was attached to part of the mucus plug. Like it just kind of kept coming out. 
and then it turned red and my doctor told me if it's pink or brown that's fine but if it looks like a period blood red to give him a call so this was like at 2 in the morning and I ended up calling the after hours number the nurse after hours nurse transferred me to him and he basically said it was something called the bloody show which I don't understand why they give everything such an ugly name like really mucus plug the bloody show like disgusting and um, not to worry about it like that's fine and so I'm like okay well shortly after I got off the phone with the doctor I started having cramps like period like cramps they were pretty constant but it wasn't like anything too too intense it was just period like cramps and I'm not one to get cramps um, when I do get my menstrual cycle the only time that I have gotten them is when I got off the birth control pill um, I got a heavier period and so I would get cramps and like my lower back would hurt and yeah but again it's not anything unbearable it's just uncomfortable especially if you're not used to it um, so I kind of tossed and turned throughout the night and I woke up on Tuesday morning and I still had the cramps but this time I decided to start tracking them because I'm like well what if they're more than cramps what if these are like actual contractions so um, sorry if I can barely keep my eyes open like I'm tired 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 so I started tracking them and they were about every seven minutes apart like seven to nine minutes I can't quite remember and I was supposed to go to an event with my mom and I had already told her like I couldn't walk so she had already borrowed a wheelchair this was before the whole mucus plug thing and I told her like I think I may be having contractions and how often they're coming and so I decided to get up take a shower wash my hair and it was really really hard for me to do all of that because like I said I kept getting these cramps cramp episodes or I guess contractions and my mom still was like okay pick you up at 12 <laughs> like I have a wheelchair for you and so we ended up going to her event and while she was pushing me around I was still getting the cramps but again it wasn't anything unbearable it was just uncomfortable you know like nobody wants to be walking around when you're having period like cramps <laughs> and so she pushed me around this whole event and everything was fine she ended up dropping me off at my house and my sister had texted me my older sister she's like I have a feeling you're gonna go into labor tonight like um, if Hector goes to work like let me go over I'll stay the night with you just in case and keep in mind my actual due date is not until another week it was October 16th but my doctor had told me that he foresaw me going up to 41 weeks and so um, I really wasn't expecting to go into labor I think I was in denial of the whole thing and so um, I think she's getting fussy I really can't move right now because my leg is still kind of numb and Hector went to the car. Um, so, um, I think I was in denial that I was actually having contractions until, like I said, my mom dropped me off. It was around like 4 p.m. and I decided to eat something and then I, Hector was asleep because again, he works nights so he was already asleep or he was asleep trying to get, oh no. I'll be right back. So like I said, I think I was in denial of uh, my contractions or I don't know where I left off, but basically I decided to take a nap with Hector and because he was asleep and I didn't get much sleep the night before anyways. And I ended up waking up with the worst cramps ever. And I couldn't tell if it was like cramps, like contractions or because I had to use the restroom because it felt like I had to use the restroom and this may be TMI but I'm not one of those people that go to the restroom frequently in a day um, and I kept ha I kept having to use the restroom literally back to back to back and these cramps were like so intense and yeah <laughs> I'm like what the hell is going on like did I eat something bad you know and I decided to end up timing them and they ended up being about five to six minutes apart and they were lasting about 30 seconds each time 
and I'm like, I think these may be contractions. Keep in mind, my sister decided that she was going to come over, so she was already on her way. Hector was unsure if he was going to call off from work or not, or like what the plan was, because again, I did not think that I was actually in labor. Um, I thought that, I don't know, maybe I ate something bad. And the cramps started getting so intense that I was like, you know what, screw this. Let me just go to the hospital, like, babe, call off of work. And then, you know, I told my sister, like, I want to go to the emergency room because even if they turn me away, like, I would rather be turned away for them to say, like, oh, no, those are not real contractions or you're not dilated enough than to risk it <laughs> and me actually be in labor the whole time. And so after using the restroom literally like 10 times, maybe that's a little, it's a tad bit excessive, maybe like eight times though, no joke. Um, I finally mustered up enough energy to hop in the shower and pack my hospital bag because keep in mind, I didn't finish packing our hospital bags because that was my plan like for that day or the next day. Again, I wasn't expecting to have my baby so soon. And so, um, my sister ends up calling that she got there and I'm still in a towel and I'm trying to get the rest of my belongings together. And as I walk outside, like I am having these contractions, but it's really weird because when they come, they're strong and then they go away and it feels like nothing ever happened. So it's like, okay, am I being dramatic or is this really that bad? And so, um, I get to, I, I get outside, Hector's packed up the car already with our stuff. He installs the baby's car seat and um, my sister's like right there and she's so excited. She's like starts crying like, I'm so happy for you. And I honestly was so nervous. Like I didn't even want to think about the fact that I'm going to the hospital and possibly having my baby and I was scared and I didn't want to think about it too much because then I would have started crying and my sister was already crying. So I'm like, oh, don't do this. <laughs> Anyways, so I ended up getting in my car and I really wanted soup because again, my stomach was hurting um, and a Gatorade. So we stopped at the gas station to get a Gatorade, but there was no way that we were going to stop at Chick-fil-A for a soup because these pains were just too bad, you know? So we hop on the freeway, get to the hospital, and they check me in right away, and they take me to the back, and they start taking my vitals, and um, while they're taking my vitals, I ask, like, what the procedure is, like, how do you know if you guys are going to keep me or not, and she said, well, when a bed opens up in triage, and I don't know what that means, but when a bed opens up, like, we'll check you, we'll see how far dilated you are, and how often your contractions are coming, and then we'll call your doctor to see if we need to keep you or not. And so she's like, let me go see if there's a bed open. She walks out and keep in mind, Hector has my cell phone because I told him to carry my purse and they didn't let him in the back with me. So um, I, I'm like sitting waiting for her and she comes back about 10 minutes later and she's like, hey, I didn't forget about you. We just don't have a bed ready. Um, it's gonna be about 10 more minutes. And she walks back out and literally at that point, I feel something like warm and wet not slimy like just wet and warm just gush in my underwear and I'm like holy shit I think my water just broke and keep in mind I'm already wearing a panty liner because of my mucus plug and like what was going on with that situation so I was already wearing a panty liner like just in case anything did happen and like I feel like I had a feeling like that was gonna happen I had told myself to put a pad on just in case my water broke but I didn't I just put on a thin liner Luckily, there was a restroom in that waiting room that I was in, and so I went to the restroom real quick, and it's literally just, like, coming out, just warm, and um, I take off the panty liner, throw it away, and, like, roll up some tissue, like, toilet paper, and, like, put it in my underwear because I don't want to ruin my clothes, like, you know? And I mean, I can wash them, but still. And so I go out to try to find the nurse and there's just like the security there. I was like, uh, can you find the nurse and let her know that I think my water just broke? And so she, the nurse came back in and she's like, what do you mean your water just broke? Because like my pants weren't wet, but it was because again, I was wearing a panty liner. So it caught 
everything. <laughs> and so I told her, yeah, like when you walked out, like I felt a gush of warm liquid, you know, and it was my water, I'm assuming. I said I just rolled it and I told her like I threw away the panty liner and I just rolled up um, toilet paper right now so I don't dirty my clothes. So she was kind of looking at me like, oh, okay, conveniently your water just broke. I don't know. She was kind of giving me like a weird, oh no, um, like a weird look like, okay, girl. And so she's like, okay, well, we'll take you back right now and we'll check. And I'm having contractions, like, at this point. Again, like, they're every three to five minutes. So then they take me to the back or whatever. And again, at this point, Hector still has my phone. So he doesn't even know that my water broke. And um, she has to check me. And that shit hurt because I was, like, in the middle of having a contraction when she's checking me. She's like, oh, yep, you definitely have a rupture. Um, you're about four centimeters dilated. And honestly, the contractions, like, were so bad. And then I was alone, and I felt bad because my sister was in, downstairs in the waiting room. Hector was in, the, like, the waiting room on the same level as me, but he didn't know that my water broke or anything. Um, and I just felt, like, alone. And anytime like, I was thinking about, shit, I'm about to have this baby, like, I wanted to cry also because I was in a lot of pain. So then um, they said that they're waiting for a room for me and the nurse that checked me was like, oh, okay, well, you can bring your, you can call your husband back now. And I'm like, oh, well, he has my phone. Um, so I can't like physically call him. I'm like, but he's in the waiting room, like hoping she would go get him. And she's like, oh, well, like, we'll just wait until you get into your room and then you can call him or we'll call him or something. And then a few minutes later, he ends up walking to the back because I guess he had asked for me. Um, and I was just like in a lot of pain. I was super uncomfortable. We finally get to our room and they hook me up to the IV and like put all these things on me. And um, basically, oh, they had to take blood as well because I had told them like right away, like, I want whatever pain drugs that you can give me or pain medication because I am not down for this. And so they knew that I wanted the epidural right away. Um, and they did say I had, I had to go through two bags of the IV um, in order to get the epidural and while they're waiting for my blood work to come back. And so I had asked, well, is there anything else that you can give me beforehand? Because honestly, the contractions were like unbearable at this point. They were like in the front, like my lower abdomen and then... Um, also in my back, like, I just felt like everything was just so tense, like, it was so, so, so painful, and I was in such a bad mood, um, and so they end up doing me my epidural, um, when I had just finished one and, like, one-fourth bag of the IV, and that shit hurt, too, <laughs> And, like, they put on, like, iodine on your back. Like, they tape it off, and they put iodine to clean everything off. Um, and that is, like, really cold. And, like, they tell you to hug a pillow and not to move or whatever. But when you're getting a needle in your spine, you don't even realize that you're moving, especially when you're, like, uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, yeah, it felt like a freaking bee sting. Like, I wasn't expecting it to hurt so bad. Like, because, like, you felt the needle go in, and then you feel, like, the medicine go in. It's, like, a second jolt of, like, something. And um, I was, like, oh, shit. And then uh, he was doing the catheter because they don't actually leave a needle in your back. They, like, thread it through with a catheter. And he was, like, is there a reason why you're moving? I'm, like, cool, because it hurts. And so they had to do the numbing shot all over again because of the way that my I positioned my back he said like I made the medicine go the wrong direction so that was not fun um but maybe about 15 minutes after the epidural I started getting super numb and from there on out like I was relaxed and the good thing is is that like they just uh, when it would run out they filled it with a new one so I had the epidural for a good 10 hours literally and um I had got up to right under six, uh, six centimeters on my own without any pain medication or anything like that and then at that point that's when it was unbearable so I got the epidural and then I started progressing I think actually no I stopped progressing because my contractions were 
Not that they were not often enough, they were just not strong enough. So they ended up giving me a Pitocin, I think that's what it's called, Pitocin, um, in my IV. And apparently the levels go up to 20, so she started me off at a two, and it was making my contractions come too fast. So they ended up like lowering it down to a one, but when they did that, it was like, it wasn't really helping anything at all. Um, but they wanted my contractions to basically be stronger in order to make me dilate and like speed the process up. Um, so the nurse that we had, she was really, really nice and she just kept, you know, coming back, checking on me, um, uh, because, or before actually, before the epidural, I guess I wasn't breathing properly because I would hold my breath through the contractions. Even though I just wasn't realizing that that's what I was doing. I thought that I was breathing through them. Um, so when I would hold my breath, the baby, the baby's heartbeat would actually like slow down to like not a good level. So they ended up giving me an oxygen mask. Um, so I had to wear the oxygen mask for a while. I forgot about that part. So um, the time keeps progressing and then I think around, cause we got to the hospital around like 9.30 or 10.30 or they checked, or my water broke at 10.30 PM. And then by this point it was probably like five or six AM and they check me and they're like, okay, you're like dilated to an eight. And it was, it was right before 7 AM because that's when my nurse was going to leave at 7 AM. So then they switched nurses and um, my nurse told me they were gonna up the Pitocin so I can, you know, get through it quicker or whatever. And I think she ended up forgetting to do it or the new nurses didn't do it. Um, so I kind of just stayed there for like another two hours. And then around 9 a.m. they said I was ready to push. They were checking me and stuff. Um, but that was like weird like the position that they put you in like your legs are up like on something and you're having to pull like your body up and push at the same time and I'm super weak so like I can't even hold myself up to push at the same time like I don't know it was really hard so long story short um the baby's heart rate again dropped and I think it was because I was holding my breath and so they had to call the doctor in and um, the doctor ended up deciding to use a vacuum to help suction the baby out and the epidural had expired like there was no more or like it ran out but I was it was still like in my system so I didn't feel anything so he used the vacuum and I felt like he got her out quickly like when he did that like how many times do you think I pushed twice I pushed like two times and then he got her out that way um, I did end up tearing. I have second degree tears. And so they had moved or they had taken the baby to the side. Um, so everybody was over there like, you know, working on the baby and the doctor was just like stitching me up. I felt like it was forever. He just kept going and going and going. That's why I had asked him like, what degree tear did I have? Because I just felt him just stitching away and like freaking seeing the needle or like the string, like, oh my God. And my legs are just open for like the world. Um, at this point, I feel like everybody has seen everything on me, but um, yeah. So Ella was born at 10.01 AM and she weighs seven pounds, two ounces, 19.75 inches long and what else that's it right that's everything hairy. <laughs> she's hairy uh, so that was my labor and delivery story I am so sore now because my um, I was, I'm so sore because my epidural ran out and I have stitches so I'm like super uncomfortable right now and I really have to pee but I'm scared to use the restroom I need to get help from the nurse in order to do so but because it's so sore down there I'm like I don't want to go but yeah so I'll be here they said they'll probably release us on Friday morning again today is Wednesday it's now about 1 p.m. but yeah so that is my labor and delivery story um, and I will thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.